Hey, thank you for watching. My name is Thomas and you're watching Dom Stack Academy. In this video, you will learn string manipulation within Power Automate Desktop. I will show you the functions that I use the most when developing Power Automate Desktop flows. Let's start right away. You see that I have a variable here and the name of the variable is client and the content of the variable is the name of the client is Tom Stack Academy and the client number is 103. I will see many of those cases which are similar but not exactly the same. We have to extract either a number or a name of a client or maybe an email address from a larger text. So let's see how we can extract both the name of the company and the number from this text. And let's also see how this flow still works in case the number of uh, characters here is different than Tom Stacker can be. So for example, there is a company with a name with only three letters, or there is a number with four digits. So let's start right away. The first function that you can use is get subtext. I'm going to add this one right now. So you first have to appoint the original text, which is going to be client. And then you have to use the start index, um, or you can just say start at the beginning of the text. So I'm going to use the starting character. And if you count this uh, text, you will see that Tom Stack Academy starts at character 27. And then you can choose whether you want a specific number of jars or you just want to have the end of the text. I'm going to go for a number of jars and I'm going to take 17 characters. And that's exactly the length of Tom Stack Academy. Then you will see here variables produced, and this is where Power Automate will store the text that it has extracted from the larger string. Click Save. And then I'm going to add a display message. Display message. This one, put it here. And I'm going to display the result of um, what we have just done. So I'm going to display a subtext on the screen. Select, click Save. And let's run the flow. And now you will see Tom Stack Academy. And of course, we can do the same with the client number, which is 103. But you will recognize that if the number of characters of Tom Stack Academy changes, this string is, going to, is always going to take 17 characters. So it's not going to work anymore for shorter or longer names. So get subtext certainly has use cases where something that you want to extract always has the same length. And for all the other use cases, I'm going to remove get subtext. And I'm also going to remove display message. We're going to go with another activity. So I'll go again to text and that's crop text. And crop text is not working based on the amount of characters, but based on the um, text that is in front or after um, the text that you want to extract. So let's again define the original text that's going to be client. And then you can say get text before the specified flag, uh, get text after the specified flag or get text between the two specified flags. And I'm going to go for the third option. You will soon see why. And now we can define the start flag and the end flag. And for the start flag, I'm going to say the client is colon space. Don't forget the space. And the end flag, that's a comma. And then I'm going to click on save. And again, I'm going to add a display message. So let's now go for crop tags. Press select, press save, and let's see what we get on the screen. Tom Stack Academy. And let's not try to change the number of characters of this client. So let's say that it's not Tom Stack Academy, but Thomas Stack Academy. Let's run our script. And you will see that even now the text extraction still works. Okay, if you also want to um, extract the client number, Let's take another quote text. Let's take this one. The original text is equal to client. Get text after the specified flag, because you see that 103 is at the end. So I just want to take everything after client number is colon and press save. I will see that the text will be stored on crop text too. So I'm going to add another display message. Message to display is cropped text too. Let's run our script. Thomas Tech Academy and the number is 103. I will see that even if the length of the number changes, this script will still work. Okay, let's remove this part. And let's continue with the next function. 
So there are situations where you have a number of enters before the text and maybe as well a space and a few enters after the text. And especially if you work, for example, with Excel, but also with many other applications, these kind of cases are quite annoying. So I'm going to press save. You'll also see here that, you, uh, that the space becomes visible. So what can we do to remove all the white spaces at the beginning and at the end of the string? Um, there is a very easy function for this. So go again to text and then search for trim text. That's the one that we're going to use. Text to trim, that's still equal to cl client. And you will see that Power Automate will save the text in trim text. Click save. And let's again search for a display message. Let's put the text here. Let's start with client. So if I run the script now, you will see that the message box appears with all the enters and all the white spaces. And if I now change the value from client to trim text, you will see that all the white spaces have disappeared. So now we only get pure text without all the white spaces. Let's remove again these activities. And then let's continue with the next activity. So go to text. And that's an activity that I use quite a lot to either replace or remove text. Replace text. And let's say that we want a text to parse. And that's going to be client. And text to find. This is Thomas Tech Academy. Uh, replace with. Uh, let's replace Thomas Tech Academy because it's wrong. Let's replace it with Tom Stack Academy. And you will see that Power Automate automatically saves this variable in the variable replaced. So let's put that one in the message box. Before we do that, let's still add the trim function because you can, of course, use multiple functions. So we want to trim replaced. And we'll see that uh, Power Automate will then save it in trimmed text. So let's again use a display message. And then let's put in the screen trimmed text. And that's the combination of both the replace function and the trim function. That's one about. The name of the client is Tom Stack Academy and the client number is 1034. I use this function quite a lot uh, to replace text. Then let's remove these ones again. Let's also remove the white spaces here. And let's continue with the next function. So go to text and search for reverse text. And this is an activity that I don't use a lot. Text to reverse, that's client. And this text will be saved in reverse text. So let's put that on the screen. I will see the Power Automate will now reverse the text. In this case, it's not that uh, useful as it's not that readable, but you might probably want to use it for numbers and other situations. Okay, let's remove these activities and let's continue with the last activity of this video. Create a new variable with set variable. Let's call this variable students. And let's add John, Peter, and Tom. And make sure that if you code with me that you use a comma and then a space. Click save. Now what we want to do, we want to transform this text with um, separators to a list. Because with a list we can do a bit more. So let's go to text. And then let's search for split text. The text that we want to split is students. And we want to split it based on a custom delimiter, which is comma space. And you see that there is a variable produced, which is text list. So click on save. And the students have now been saved in a list, which is text list. And that's a list that we can iterate through. And we can do that with a for each activity. So take the for each activity. And then the value to iterate is text list. And if you iterate to this list with the for each activity, you can do something for any of these items. So let's again search for a display message, put it in for each, and then let's say that we want to show current item. Now, if we run the script, Power Automate will show the names of the students one by one. So we are now showing a message box, but we can as well do something else, maybe send an email for every student. So let's run the script. You, you will see John. 
Peter and Tom. I made this video to give you a brief overview of all the string activities in Power Automate Desktop. I hope it was useful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.